open your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 and turn to verse 7. I want to continue uh, talking about living in the river. Are you in the river? Yeah, in the river. Ezekiel chapter 47 and verse 7, it says, When I returned there along the banks of the river, there were many trees on one side and the other. And then he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. And when it reaches the sea, look at this, its waters are healed. Its waters are healed. How many know the waters of the Holy Spirit heal our life? They heal the bitter waters that the world fills us with. The bitter anger, the bitterness, the, the resentment, the, the grudges. The arguments, the divisions in your heart. The Bible says that when the water flowed down there, right, the waters were healed, right? And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a great multitude of fish because these waters go there, for they will be healed. And everything will live wherever the river goes. And it shall be that fishermen, how I many know we are the fishermen? I mean, we are the fishermen. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Gedi to En Eglam, and they will be place, there, there will be places for spreading their nets. There will be places for spreading their nets. I want to talk to you about living in the river. You can be seated today. And as I've been sharing, thank you, as I've been sharing with you on this subject, we know that the river has a source, the river has a course, and the river has a force. I'm just breaking down this scripture for you because there's so much meat in the word. And how many know that if revival is going to burn, we need the word? We need the word. Uh, he talked about a man who had a line, and he measured out a thousand cubits. If you look at that, prophetically speaking, that line or that plumb line or that line is a guide representing the word of God. So when we come to church, we don't come to church just to worship and just to pray. There must be an enthusiasm for the preaching and the teaching of the word of God. When the word of God is preached, come on somebody, signs and wonders must follow. So the very definition of true revival is that revival is contagious and reproductive. When we really get down to talking about revival, revival was never intended to stay within these four walls. But how many of you believe that when revival comes, it begins to not only shake your life, but it begins to shake the lives of the people you are connected to, and then it begins to shake the community and then it begins to shake the city. When revival comes and a city is shaken, a city could literally shake the entire world for the glory of God. So revival is contagious and it's also reproductive. We've been studying the river and the river is a, is a picture of the Holy Spirit. When you think of a river, a river moves with speed, a river moves with power. A river has the ability to penetrate hard things. How many feel like before uh, out, this outpouring, some of you might have become hard in the house of God. Hard in the house of God. Come on, be, admit it today. Hard. You couldn't praise. You couldn't lift up your hands. You couldn't pray. Your, your whole body language begins to indicate the hardness of your heart. But how many know when the river begins to flow, the river begins to penetrate with power the hardness of the human heart? Come on, say Amen. And the river not only penetrates, but according to the word here, this prophecy in Ezekiel, the river brings life to whatever it comes into contact with. So whatever the river touches comes back to life. There are a few keys to this river. I want you to write this down. Number one, if you really study the river of Ezekiel chapter 47, you will find that the river has no other rivers feeding it. Now, there's a river, rivers that we see, that are connected to other rivers. But what Ezekiel 47 says is that this river comes from the altar of God. Come on, somebody. 
that there aren't any other bodies of water feeding this river, but this river is created at the altar of the temple. That when the people of God are broken of their sin, okay, when the people of God are broken of, and, and tired of hurting the heart of God, when the people have come to a place in their life where they recognize that their way does not work, but there's a better way. It's God's way. And when they come to the altar and they begin to repent of their sin, the Bible says there's a river that is produced from the altar of God. What am I saying to you? The only source of a river is repentance at the altar of God. Oh, come on. Give God praise. That's powerful. There's no other source. See, the river of the Holy Spirit comes from a place of repentance and renewal, a place of humility. Humility. It's amazing how so many people in the kingdom of God have become so proud, so proud, so arrogant. Look at me, look at me, look at me. I tell you, man, what would happen if we taught people to look at God? I, I don't come to church to look at me. In fact, I, I see myself, and frankly, I get disgusted sometimes because I know me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you all are perfect, and you all have it all together. I come to the house of God, and I know me. I can't look at me. I can't look at me, but when you look at God, he makes all things beautiful, and that's when the river begins to flow. So the river has a source. Also, the river flows, and this is the part I really want you to hear. It flows with intentional purpose and destination. The river not only has a source, but there is a course. Just look at your neighbor and tell them there is a course for this river. And the river of the Holy Spirit is much bigger and more powerful than we can imagine. The very intent of revival is that the mission of Jesus Christ might be fulfilled. Write that down. The very intent of revival is that the mission of Jesus Christ shall be fulfilled. The river is, is a picture of the movement and the power of the Holy Spirit. And what we know about the Holy Spirit, what we know about a river, which is comparable to the Holy Spirit, is we know that the Holy Spirit is powerful and the Holy Spirit is bold. Hear me. A river is powerful. A river is bold. And that's why when you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the primary markings of being filled with the Holy Spirit is boldness. Are you hearing me today? When you have been filled from on high, when they were filled in the upper room, they went from fear and shame and, and, and they came from a place of no power into a spirit of boldness. The markings of being filled and anointed by the Holy Spirit is a spirit of boldness in your life. How many of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit? How many of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit? How many of you understand that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, hear me and hear me very clearly, there is no reason to hold back. When you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, when you've been filled with the river of God, there is a spirit of boldness. And a person who has been filled with the Holy Spirit has no reason to hold back, has no reason to cower, has no reason to walk in fear, has no reason to walk in shame, has no reason to be reluctant in the house of God. I came to tell you this Sunday morning, the Holy Spirit is not conservative. I wish the whole entire church would hear that. I wish the whole body of Christ would hear that. I came to tell you, the Holy Spirit is not conservative. But when you have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, you have been filled with an anointing. You have been filled with boldness. You have been given something radical. I came to tell you this morning, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now. The Holy Spirit is radical. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot help but to be radical for God, you cannot help but to want to be used by God. The Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, is not conservative. Touch your neighbor and tell them, stop being so conservative. 
Stop being so conservative. Woo. Stop being so churchy. There is a river that's flowing in this place. And that river is flowing with a purpose. That river is flowing with an intention. That river is flowing with a mission. It's so that the people of God in this moment would rise up, not in a shy spirit, but that the people of God would rise up in a spirit of boldness so that the mission of Jesus can be accomplished. See, I, I came to tell you the Holy Spirit, the river, comes to empower us to declare, to speak, to prophesy, and to intercede. And the Holy Spirit of God is a lion. It's the lion of the tribe of Judah. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. The river in Ezekiel is Jesus. Is there anyone here today, you have been filled with the power of Jesus Christ in this season. And can you come on and let the world know? Come on and let the world know that the Holy Spirit rests upon you. That the spirit of revival is birth. Come on and let everybody know. Come on, let that boldness shine forth. That the Holy Spirit is upon you and he has anointed you with power. The Holy Spirit is a lion. I love what the great general Napoleon Bonaparte said. He said, I would rather have an army of sheep led by a lion than an army of lions led by sheep. <laughs> I came to tell you, yes, we are the sheep of his pasture, but Jesus is the lion. And the Lord is able to anoint his sheep and turn them into an army of revival. He's able to anoint his people and use them in a mighty way. I wonder if there's anyone here this morning that the Lord is stirring your heart. He's stirring your passion. He's stirring your fire. Come on and open up your mouth and say, yes, Holy Ghost, I am a part of the army of God. We're an army. We are also a river flowing from the temple. And see, Jesus is the lion of revival. And he's leading us with purpose. And he's leading us with his power. And he's given us his power. His power is upon you and I so that we might flow with him. That we might flow with him. This is so good. Someone say, there's a river. And I mean, no, you know, when there, there's a river, you, you've got to flow in the river. You got to flow in the river. Why is God anointing you? Why is the Spirit of God anointing you? Because it's time to flow. Now I do realize that when the glory of God falls, it's a delight to those who love God, but it is it is torture to those who hate God. It's a delight to those who love God because when you love God, you want to flow with God. When you love God, you want to worship God. When you love God, you want to pray longer. You say, "Man, Pastor Miller went up there. I wanted to pray longer." Because you're what? Because you're moving in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Come on, help me get this out. See, when you love God, it's a delight to worship. It's a delight to pray. It's a delight to evangelize. It's a delight to intercede. It's a delight to fast. It's a delight to win soul. It's a delight to see sinners saved and delivered when you love the Lord. But when you hate God, you don't want to do those things. When you hate God, you try to dismiss the flow of the Holy Spirit. But when you love the Lord, when you hate God, you say, when is this over? When is this over? When do we get to go home? I hate God. I hate God. You don't say it, but you show it. It comes out of your body language. You feel uncomfortable in the house of God. What are these crazy people doing? We're just loving God. We're just flowing with the Holy Ghost. We just recognize that there's an anointing in this place. There's a stirring in this place. The power of God is we don't hate God. We love God. And we say, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Lead us wherever you want to lead us. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. My goodness. And then the, the course of the river or, or the assignment of the river was eastward. And everything it, that came into contact with, look at this came back to life. It talks about trees 
by the river that begin to bloom, begin to prosper. Those trees represent his people. That wherever the river flows, his people are not left dry. They're not left dry. How many of you love that scripture in the book of Psalms? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of God, nor stands in the path of sin, nor sits in the seat of the mocker. For his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he becomes like what? A tree planted by rivers of water whose leaf shall not wither, but whatever he or she does shall prosper. Ezekiel 47 says that wherever the river flows, life shall be produced. Dead things shall come back to life. Dead things come back to life. See, this river was spoken prophetically in Zechariah chapter 13, 1 and Joel chapter 3, verse 18. This is an actual river. If you go to Israel, you will find this river under the temple. It's called the Gihon River. And it exists. And it was discovered when, when Hezekiah dug a, a, a trench 2,700 years ago. Come on, somebody. And this actual river that flows from the temple is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a word to you and I. It was a word to Israel that no matter what you've been through, Israel, Israel, because there's a river, Israel shall recover. And this word is a picture to the church that no matter what you have been through, no matter what you have faced in life, no matter what the enemy has broken in and stolen, guess what? The promise is you shall recover. You shall recover. See, revival comes so that we could recover what the enemy has stolen. We can recover what the enemy has taken away from our midst. Revival comes so that we can recover lost things. And the river tells us that in the recovery will not only be lost, the, the, you know, regaining the spirit of worship and regaining the spirit of prayer and regaining the joy and regaining the passion, but the trees represent that the people shall be recovered. The people who have been scattered, the people who have been lost, the people who are dry and thirsty and weary and without water, they're going to hear about a river oh my God, that is flowing under the temple and they're going to say, I've been thirsty, I've been wandering, I've been wondering, where is the fresh water? And we're able to declare to them as we stay anointed in the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm just letting the Spirit move right now, that there is a river flowing from the temple at Victory Outreach San Diego. Come and drink of the fresh water. Come and drink of the fresh anointing. Come and drink for the Lord is good and the Spirit of the Lord is able to bring you back to life. My goodness. See, what the enemy has tried to steal from the church and what the enemy has tried to steal from his people, revival comes so that the church can recover it. In the season, we've recovered his glory. We've recovered his presence. We're recovering his power. But you know what some of you are going to recover is his vision. Because the Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. And there is coming a recovery of vision in your life. Where the spirit of the Lord is going to allow you to dream for him again. Dreams that you thought were dead. Dreams that you thought would never happen. Dreams where you thought you messed up so bad that that dream was forfeited. I declare to you in this season, you are going to recover your dream. You're going to recover your vision. See, God has given the ministry of victory outreach a vision. The river comes with a purpose and a destination and a purpose. And the reason the Lord is allowing the river to flow here is because there's going to be a recovery of vision. Can you turn me up in the monitor, please? I'm struggling up here. There's going to be a recovery of vision. There's going to be a recovery of what you have lost. Some of you are here this morning and your vision has been damaged. 
You have lost your sense of purpose. You have lost your sense of destiny. But I declare to you on this Sunday morning, there is a recovery of vision. The Lord is going to stir up your vision once again. See, the river of God came so that it might flow in Israel. And as it flowed in Israel, that river flows in us. Jesus said in John 7, 37, he says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said with a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow within him. Let me, let me ask you, church, have you had that? If, if you've had that, let me see your hand. Okay, a lot of you haven't. Because you know that revival is in you when you feel the rivers of living water flowing in you again. So let, let me ask you, it's a physical experience. Let me ask you, who has had the physical, tangible experience since October of water flowing through you? Let me see your hand. Okay, still many of you who have not had it. You have not had it and you need it. You have not had that experience and, and, and you need it. Tell your neighbor, you need it. I've had it multiple times here in this place, over here, prostrating before the Lord, laying down before the Lord as the glory and the weight of his presence falls upon me and my posture shifted to prostration. I could feel the rivers of living water flowing through me, sweeping over me, shifting things around in my life, shifting appetites, shifting desires, shifting mindsets. See, that's why in order for revival to start burning effectively, every person here must have that living water experience. Now, I'm not a Baptist. Oh, well, we received the living water. No, I'm not a Baptist. I'm a Pentecostal. I speak in tongues. I prophesy. I pray and I fast. And when you pray and when you fast, right, Shirley? That's when you experience the physical manifestation of the living waters. Come on, somebody. The living waters flowing and moving through you. So the river comes so that the people might be filled. But then secondly, the river comes that it might flow through us. See, what has not flown in you cannot flow through you. Are you hearing me? What has not flown in you, what has not burned in you, cannot burn through you. And remember, the purpose of the river is to flow out to dead things. The purpose of the river is to begin to move so that dead things can come back to life. Is your family dead? Are your loved ones dead in sin? Are the people at your job dead in sin? Do they hate God? Do they hate the church? Do they hate the things of God? Then God has chosen you. God has entrusted you. God has filled you. Not so you can be blessed. But so that the river can flow through you so that dead things can come back to life. My God, come on, somebody. You have the power. You have the dominion. You have the authority. Don't ask me to pray for your family and visit your family when God has given you the authority. I can pray for them from a distance, but don't ask me to lay hands on them when your hands are just as anointed as my hands. And your words are just as anointed as my words. And your prayer life is just as anointed as my prayer life. See, this is why the church stops. This is why the river stops, because not everybody functions in the power of the Holy Spirit. So my question is, has the river filled you? And if the river has filled you, then the river wants to move through you. 
The river can change even the darkest place. There was a story I read, I'm going to close in a minute, about a, a, a battleship in the U.S. Navy called the USS North Carolina. In 1857, the battleship USS North Carolina, a 74-gun ship of the line launched in 1820 out of the Philadelphia Navy Yard, was anchored in New York Harbor, and her long years of duty were now reduced to being a naval receiving ship. Now, among the many sailor, sailors on board were four young Christian crewmen who decided that they would meet and pray. Looking for a private place of prayer, they met on the lower deck. They were given that deck. It was a beaten up deck, a dark deck, an unused deck. And falling upon their knees, they instantly were filled with the presence of God. So great was their joy that these four sailors started to sing and praise the Lord. These, the, the ship was filled of wicked sailors, wicked men. And those of you who have served in the Navy, talk to me now. You know how wicked it can be. So imagine in those days how wicked these men were. And they were upon the top deck and they heard the singing and the praying and decided to investigate. Upon discovering that it was coming from a secret prayer meeting, the vile bunch decided to mock these four Christians and to come against them. Descending into the iron stairs to the place of prayer, when the mob came into the space, they fell under the presence of the Holy Spirit. Their mockings turned into bitter tears. Conviction overcame them. And they began to cry out to God for mercy. My God. The captain, several days later, the prayer meeting continued, and hundreds of the crew were converted. The captain of the ship sent a message to Sora rec requesting the help of pastors and ministers to come to the ship to pray with the sailors. The USS North Carolina has become known as a bastion of revival. Because four sailors, four sailors turned a battleship into a Bethel. What has God done in this church? Some of you didn't catch it. I said, what has the Holy Spirit done in this church? He's turned a church that for 36 years was a battleship. And he shifted it into a Bethel. And I came to tell you on this Sunday morning as they come to the keys. I came to tell you this Sunday morning, the Lord has changed us for a purpose because he says when you pray and when you fast and when you worship and when the river begins to flow, the lost will get saved. The bound shall be delivered. The marriage shall be healed. The young people shall be destroyed. The heart shall be healed. The sickness shall be healed. The bitterness shall be healed. Because wherever the river flows, just play soft. Wherever the river flows, it's going to bring things back to life. So my, my question is this. Do you believe it or not? Do you believe it or not? I, I look out here today, I see some of you that do not believe. It is clear you do not believe. Your spirit tells me you do not believe. You become hard. In revival, there's two people. There's those who love it and there's those who hate it. They hate it. Because revival will either draw you or repel you. But there are a group of people here this morning that you say, no, Pastor. I'm learning more about the Holy Spirit that I have ever learned in the history of my walk with God. I'm learning more about the Holy Spirit.
I tell you that that's been my testimony. Serving the Lord all these years. All these years. Doing the best I can for the Lord all these years. And finally realizing that I did not know much about the living waters. But I came to tell you, it's a new season. It's a new day. The river wants to flow without limitation today. With revival, all, all limits are removed. That's why I love the prayer meetings. I love the prayer meetings. I love the all-night prayer. Because it's a place where the limits are removed. I kind of think of the temple. You know, you have the outer courts, the inner courts, and then the holy of holies. And those of you who come to church on, you know, just one Sunday a month or one Sunday a week, you know, you're really an outer courts believer. That's what you are. You're living on the outer courts. But to those of you who come on Wednesdays and Sunday nights and Sunday morning, and, well, you know, you are, you're, you're moving to being an inner courts believer. But those of you who come to those all-night prayer meetings, oh, my God. You're saying, I don't desire to be ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. I want to swim where there's no limit. I want to swim where there's no limit. I want to come into his presence where anything can happen. And when you're, when you're most dry, God is faithful. God is faithful that his anointing is able to bring those dead things back to life for you. Yes. How many can say amen? He's able to bring those dead things back to life. And when the Holy Spirit starts to move, you know, there's no limit to what he can do. There's no limit to wh where he can take you. Just last week, we prayed for Brother Ishmael. He's known around here as Rico. He says, don't call me Rico. Don't call me Rico because that's my old life. There's even people in the church that you still go by your nickname from the world. Chapo, Flaco, Gordo, Menso. He said, he said, don't call me that because that's who I was. He, well, hold up. And then when he got saved, they kept calling him that. But then when heaven opened, God gave him a revelation that even though he'd been in the church for so many years already, two years, three years already, that October 1st, when heaven opened, he said, Pastor Miller, tell the people, Sister Georgina, tell the people, don't call me Rico. My name is Ishmael because the Spirit of God has changed this man. He's changed me. And this last week, we prayed for him to go and be a missionary to an island in Curacao in the Caribbean. And he's been messaging me every day how he, God's using him to preach. He says, Pastor, he goes, I have a mission. I'm here to bring revival to Curacao. And we've been praying, Pastor, and we've been teaching the brothers in the home. He said, oh, the brothers in the home, they have a lot to learn. They don't know how to serve. They don't. I said, well, brother, lay the foundation. Let the Lord use you. And God is sending him reinforcements from other Victor Arch churches. Pastor Sonny said something. See, so when you get into the river, you begin to change. It could even happen for someone who's been serving God a long time. But you haven't really 
let those living waters stir you. And I'm going to tell you that this is your opportunity. This is your chance, this season, this moment. To say, Lord, I've been serving God a long time, but I know there's more. And I know that there's a purpose. And I have not yet experienced that river. I look at the people breaking and laying you know, down, face down before the Lord and kneeling and dancing and shouting. And I look at them and it makes me happy, but I have not had that myself. I haven't had that. I haven't had those waters flowing in my life. But I came to tell you, there is a river. And God wants to touch you with the river of his power so that what you've lost, you can recover and even more in Jesus' name. Now, I know there are many of you who are filled, but if you say, Pastor, I, I feel the Lord in this place. I, I want the river to flow in me and through me. I want you to come. Just come. I want the river to flow in me and through me. I want to have that river moving in my life. That river that will not leave me the same. I'm not talking about religion. We have enough religious people in the world. I'm talking about people that say I'm open to the power of the Holy Ghost. Some of you are coming who have already been filled. That's okay. But there's more. There's more. You say, I want that life. I want that life. Jesus. You've been fasting. You're, you're, you're giving the Holy Spirit permission to some of you who already have it, come lay hands, come lay hands on the people. It's a mighty river. There's a mighty river. Lay hands. 